Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Interview with the Stars. And my name is Stevie Mars. And tonight, we have a special guest. Our guest is Stephen Langland, and he is actually a student at Full Sail University right now. And he is going for a degree of a bachelor's in game design. So, thank you for coming here, and we're, we're, we're really excited to have you here and hear all this insight you have on the gaming industry. So, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for um, accepting to be here. We appreciate it. Thank you, Stevie. Thank you for having me here, actually. And uh, I'm glad to be here, and I really appreciate you guys uh, inviting me here and allowing me to be on your great show. And uh, I really, I'm really glad to be here, and I really appreciate it. So, um, actually, Stephen, the pleasure is all ours, and uh, we appreciate your gratitude for sure. Uh, we love having people like you on here, and, and I know our viewers do too. So, uh, actually, uh, Let's, speaking of our viewers, let's go ahead and jump right into a question that one of them had, and uh, it's actually the first one of the night. It's coming out of uh, Tennessee, and uh, the, it's, uh, the question is, is, what brought you to your initial decision of going into the Bachelor's of Video Game Design degree program? Actually, Stevie, you know, that's a, it's a very interesting and um, quite deep question you asked me there um, as a start off. Because really, initially, uh, when I was younger, I, uh, I was, this is way a long time ago, but uh, I got a PlayStation, the very, one of the very first PlayStations to come out, you know what I mean, and uh, here in the U.S. And uh, when I got it, I, uh, I plugged this thing in, I started playing it, and I was like, oh man, this is way better than, you know, the Sega Genesis and, and, and the Super Nintendo and all this kind of stuff and, 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 and yada, 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 but... But anyways, it took me to a place to where I was like, oh my goodness, I can escape from this, you know, struggle of a reality of my life and and go into a world that frees me. You know what I mean? It, it makes me totally no bounds and no rules, no restrictions other than you might die and then you can live again. You know, and uh, ever since then, it, it kind of tied with my passion of uh, wanting to see how things work because... Because uh, uh, I also like to take apart a lot of stuff just to see how they work and put them back together. It's, it's kind of a hobby of mine. So, uh, so kind of both of those things kind of combined when I was a kid. And it, it really wanted me to create games. But uh, see, my dad was never around. So I kind of had to grow up quick. And um, he was a fighter and a boxer, which is kind of probably why the reason why I ended up into that field a lot, you know, a lot later in life. But uh, anyways... Um, he was, he was never around, so I kind of grew up really fast, and I never really got to enjoy my childhood, so playing games was kind of taking me back a little bit to my childhood days, and uh, it was a little nostalgic for me, And uh, but anyways, um, I worked at my job for 13 years, man, and um, one morning I got up, and I had actually just recently cut off my finger and, and uh, fractured my back. It was a hairline fracture on my T7 vertebra, and uh, I was sitting in the bathroom one morning, and I was like, you know, I, I, I can't be treated like this anymore. I can't take people looking down on me. And, and I mean, even the bosses was just, you know, looking down on me and, and really, really disrespecting me. And it just, it really hurt me. And it made me feel like I was worthless. And I realized, you know what, let's, let's do what I always say. Let's keep pushing forward. So, uh, that morning I was actually just searching around on LinkedIn and stuff and full cell university actually popped up on my newsfeed. And, uh, I looked at it and I was like, you know what, I've always wanted to play games. I've always wanted to be a game tester. I mean, what little boy wouldn't want to be a game tester? So I looked at it and I, and I looked at it with this, you know, 32 year old mind that I'm at now, you know, and, uh, and I seen, you know, Hey, you know, let's, let's change my stars. Let's keep pushing forward. Let's, let's open new doors and new possibilities. And that's kind of what I wanted to, wanted to kind of drive home kids is that, you know, keep pushing forward. No matter how old you are, you can always learn new things and you can always open new doors and new possibilities for you to succeed and change the life that you're in. Even if you don't like it and you're dealt a bad hand, you can always push forward and keep going. And that's, that's, that's kind of what I really, really liked about it. But yeah, I mean, initially I, I kind of got it when I was a kid and then just later on in life, I kind of still had that passion going. I mean, I own two or three different types of consoles and then I, I just woke up one morning and I said, I've had enough and I, I changed something else, you know? So thank you for the question. That's very interesting, Steve, and very insightful. And uh, to all those viewers out there, um, I know we all can relate because uh, struggle in our lives is 
is actually a mutual feeling between a lot of people and um, it's a very good point that you brought up there and I, I also want to reiterate on that subject very very strongly that you are never too old to go out and do something to make your life better you can always always turn a bad situation into a good one even though the hand that you're dealt was not very good you can always always turn it around and keep pushing forward like you said so thank you for that Steve we uh, we really appreciate that bit of information so um, the next question that we have though is uh, you said that you were at Full Sail University and um, we was just kind of curious who is your program director for that you know game design department Okay, so um, as far as your question of who uh, the program director is, his name is Fernando de la Cruz, and he is the uh, program director at uh, Full Sail University for the game, you know, design program. And uh, actually, if the guys would, could you guys throw up his information on the screen right now? Because uh, I tried to guy bring you guys a little bit of information so you could do that. And uh, anyways, check him out. Um, He's the greatest guy in the world. I mean, he really, he messaged me back fast. He was like, hey man, you know, thank you for the heads up. Uh, Cause we was having a little, you know, a little class assignment where we were all gonna have to end up messaging him. So I was kind of like, hey bud, just to let you know, our project is to bombard you with a bunch of messages. So get ready for the spam attack, you know? So, uh, and uh, it was kind of funny. Cause he was like, thank you for the heads up, you know? and. Uh, uh, he's a really nice guy, and he gave me a whole lot of information, and, and I really appreciate his help, and man, it's just, I really love Full Sail. The teachers, everybody is just great. The, I mean, I'm currently in like, you know, technology and media and the entertainment right now, and I, I can't believe, I love my teacher. He's the greatest, you know, and uh, the teacher before that, her name was uh, um, Ann Overseen. And she was actually the teacher for psychology of play. And she is just an absolute sweetheart. She comes from Alabama like me, and she's just great. So, I mean, uh, check out Fernando for sure. He is the best program director so far that I have seen, even though I probably haven't seen that many, but he's still one of the greatest. But uh, he's really nice. He's a really great guy. And I can't say enough good things about him and the teachers at Full Sail. So, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, um, for sure, we'll be making sure we look out for Fernando. And uh, we also want to ask another question real quick since you're on the subject of your program director. Did he happen to mention uh, what some of the software and programming languages that you might be using, you know, in the future or, or that you have used so far or anything like that? Well, actually, Stevie, those, uh, those uh, questions that you just asked me, those answers were actually found from Fernando. And, uh, yeah, Mr. Cruz, he... Uh, he messaged me back and I was like, I'm sorry I have to ask you all this. Like I said, we were all, it was all of a class project and I asked him and uh, see, I'm not very versed in all this kind of stuff. So I kind of had to like research it. He sent me an email and he's like, yeah, we're gonna be using C Sharp, Unreal Engine 4 and the Blueprint visual scripting language inside the UE4, you know, and uh, the Unreal Engine 4, you know. And uh, so, and I'm over here like, what? And I've read blueprints before because I'm in the, in the construction business, but I'm over here like, what? And when you see, and when you actually see the C sharp, it actually looks like C hashtag. So you're like, hashtag what? What are we, what are we hashtagging here? I have no idea what's going on. So I kind of had to jump on there real quick myself and kind of look it up. But yeah, those are the, uh, those are the main things we were, we we're going to be using is the C sharp, the Unreal Engine 4, and the Blueprint Visual Scripting Language, you know, inside the Unreal Engine 4. So, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks again for that question. And uh, I'll definitely be more learning more about it in the future. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Those sound like some really good programming languages stuff like that it's very interesting and I hope all the viewers out there caught that because I know in the future they might be learning new stuff and it might be just cutting edge more than what we've already had before I know the C sharp is a very big thing I've seen it everywhere on the internet so uh, I can't wait for you to jump into that um, I also got a question since we're kind of on that subject what degree skills do you want to focus you know on and why would you want to focus on them you know coming up in Actually, um, that question is a little bit of a research question again that I had to do because uh, I kind of really didn't. I mean, you, you have assignments and in in, at full sale from different teacher, teachers trying to ask you, hey, you know, look at the future of what you're going to be looking in in your classes, kind of get an idea of what you're going to be doing. 
and uh, which classes do you think, you know, what, what do you think, you know, how many hours do you think you're going to spend on this class? How, how often do you, you know, is this class going to be hard? Is it going to be difficult? And uh, I, um, I actually looked at the skills on there and some of the skills I'm going to be needing is some programming and visual scripting are the skills that will help me, you know, become a better, become better at prototyping because that's the main thing that we're going to be doing is a lot of prototyping because those prototypes are going to help us be able to put games together in the future because that's kind of what Full Cell does is Full Cell helps you create your own game. So that way you can take that game on your computer, on your tablet, on whatever you created on and you can go to your, you know, your job that you're trying to get hired at, at that HR person, at those hiring people, at those level designers, at those combat design, you know, hiring executives and you can show them exactly your work that you've done. That's one of the most best things that I've found out about full sales so yes a lot of those skills are going to be going towards the prototyping so yes scripting languages and, and visual scripting and programming is going to be very very big in, in in the prototyping so you've got to learn that so for sure awesome steve thank you for that information <clears throat> so since you're at full sale and you're learning all this kind of stuff and it sounds like you're going to be dealing with prototypes in the future and since we're kind of on that subject what do you think will be your hardest classes and why will be they be difficult for you specifically? Actually, um, that question kind of pertains to what I was kind of saying earlier with my assignments and teachers wanting you to view the other, uh, the other classes that are upcoming. And so when I looked at on my seat, actually I seen like three or four of them. One is gonna be discrete mathematics. I actually had to look that up on Google and I have no idea what it's saying. I looked up the definition. I even looked at a couple examples and I'm just like, I'm gonna have to learn it when I get there. Um, <laughs> another one is gonna be programming. Um, I have no idea, I have no experience in it. So who knows what's gonna be coming up. I know that it's gonna be kind of uh, a little bit difficult so I'm, I'm anticipating it to kind of slow me down a little bit another one is going to be the technical writing which uh, which another which again I have like minimal experience in. I have like you know I just don't know I've heard people talk about it but I haven't really done anything with it so um, yeah and the next thing that I would say the final class that I think was going to be hard would be um, the English comp classes and the, that's just because I know English teachers are so nitpicky and I am, I am just, I, I dread it. You know, English comp, I just dread all the time in the English class, I kind of dread. But um, I mean, it all makes us better. That's why we take them. So I, I'm actually, I'm ready to learn and I know it's gonna be hard, but I'm just gonna keep pushing, like I said before. And uh, uh, another thing I'd like to add is I thought the current class that I am, that I'm in, which is TEM or technology in the entertainment media was gonna be the very first hardest class I was going to come up against. And really, to be honest with you, to my big surprise, it may be a lot of work and it is very, very overwhelming when you first see it. But I mean, once you start talking to Mr. Hendricks, it's just, I mean, it, it, it eases all your worries. He gives you a rubric. He tells you exactly what you can do to make sure that you get the A's. And I mean, I mean, all the teachers are like that. They all provide you a rubric. A rubric. It's just that, you know, I mean, I mean, Mr. Hendricks really is just a great guy, and he's helped me out. And it made me, it eased me, it eased my soul a lot when I finally got to go in there and see the first live, you know, live Zoom lecture with him and talking to him since I was online. You know, because I'm on the online class. I'm not actually going to the campus. I'm uh, actually living in Wichita, Kansas, and the full cell is in, you know, Florida and Winter Park. And so um, I go on online classes. But I mean, even with having those, you know, cross state type of talks and, you know, teachers and stuff like that, we're still feeling close because we get the live lectures and they're staying in such close contact with us. So it's, it's really awesome. So, all right. Yeah, it sounds like this Greek mathematics is going to be really, really hard for you. Yeah, because I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> anyway, since uh, since you told us your hardest classes, what do you think will be the easiest classes for you and why? Actually, um, that, that question is kind of a difficult uh, double-edged question to me because I don't want to say any class in college is easy. But um, actually, I think the easiest classes that I have, I've already taken and I'm actually currently in. Um, one of them would be psychology of play, like I said, and 
is just such a great woman. She's she's just like Mr. Hendricks. Uh, they they both sit there and they they give you such great information on how you can get an A. There's really almost no way to fail unless you just like ignored everything that they said and just you know I mean check the rubric, check the rubric, <laughs> you know for sure check the rubric no matter what. Rewatch the Zoom lectures, <laughs> you know so uh, check the rubric. <laughs> but yes, uh, anyways those were the those were the classes that I kind of seen that might have been the easiest only because of those two teachers just made it so that I mean they they give you the tools to succeed and they they literally gave it to you on a, they give it to you on a silver platter so I mean there's no way around it so I mean I just I appreciate that so much and a big shout out to them they're the greatest <laughs> they made it easy thank you <laughs> that's awesome man that sounds like some those classes are really going to be really nice and it sounds like you had fun in them and stuff like that and uh those teachers sound great. And uh, since um, <clears throat> since you said you knew what your hardest classes were, I just wanted to ask you, how will you succeed in those hard classes and what can you do now to prepare for them? Okay, well, <clears throat> I guess some things that I could do. Uh, well, I mean, you can always study. <laughs> um, anyways, it's kind of like what I said. Read the rubric. <laughs> Read the rubrics. Read those rubrics, man. They are they are the keys to success. They really are. They give you the ones where it's it's zero all the way to the best. I mean, you go from exceptional to mediocre, moderate, and the worst. You know what I mean? And 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 each teacher, if you have trouble on the assignments, when you go into those rubrics and you go in there. They give you examples of what to do, and that's that's the key right there. When you read those rubrics, when you study, you talk. You if you keep in contact with your teachers, man, that's that's the main thing that I like to stress is just keep in contact. If you have any questions, that's their job. They are there to talk to you. You know what I mean? And and, and I mean, I have not met a teacher yet that is like, oh, leave me alone. You're asking too many questions. You know, I, I mean, sometimes I feel like I do. I know that I know they probably had that cross their minds and stuff, but. Sometimes it's not, and um, and anyways, um, another thing that could be if you're having trouble that on full cell they have online tutors that help you in the class, and you if you're having trouble they give you other student like student mentors that's in there. Another thing would be to research, you know, the classes that you're going into. Uh, I could research that class and make sure that you know if if just get a broad idea of what i'm doing so that way some of the terms i'm, I'm familiar with you know you know you know stuff like that so that way i'm not just walking in there blind and they're like hey c c sharp is c squared to c3 and you're over here like i only know about c3po you know what are you talking about you know and uh so you just kind of go from there and uh you know, I mean, if, if you want to, you can always, always get online and see if you could connect with somebody either on Facebook, LinkedIn, and just find a mentor. You know, find somebody that's done this before and ask them, hey, can you please help me with some tips? Is there anything that you would be able to, uh, you know, help me out with or, um, you know, anything that you could possibly do? So, and I mean, like I said, I gotta can't drive home any more than just communicate with your teachers and read those rubrics read them so yeah that's that's exactly what I'm going to do so <laughs> sounds like you've got a plan Steve it sounds like you've got a really good plan for the future and uh, best of luck to you on that and uh, <clears throat> all right we just got one more question for you buddy and then we can get you out of here and uh, maybe get some lunch or something like that um, so um how will you break down your time to make sure you succeed in getting your diploma and your degree there's two classes so far that has actually really hit on time batching itself to make sure that we kind of succeed on the time schedules that we have. And they're called, uh, the first one I was with was in my psychology of play with, with Miss Ann Overseen. And um, she called it her work, play, fit, push uh, plan. And it was, a, it was a weekly template. It went by the weeks from Sunday, you know, from Monday to Sunday all those days and what you did was you filled out how you could best do your you know do the days hey you know you got work you got you know all the kind of stuff you try to hit on the main the main points of your day and you just filled out those and you did the best that you could to stay on to that plan okay now the next one is actually in the class that I'm in right now with Mr. Hendricks technology and entertainment in the media and he gave us a plan of attack 
Now this, this is more of, um, this is a monthly thing, okay? This isn't just a weekly thing. You're gonna fill out your weeks, but, but the best way, so that way you could tackle those is, is kind of to use his template along with hers and map out your whole monthly plan. And then if you feel like you need to get more detailed, you pull out her plan and you just start going on that specific week and make sure that, hey, I've got enough time to do this assignment, this assignment, and this assignment. And that's, that's gonna help you out the best because when you look at the technology and media, entertain, and technology and the, <laughs> technology and the entertainment media one of the whole month, it actually gives you below of the hours it states of how long you're thinking you're gonna take on that assignment, you know, that you're gonna to have to take it to do and complete it. And then you even get your little notes on the side so you can tell yourself, hey man, this is this is why I was kind of slow. This is why this one went over that time. Because you have a guesstimate box and then you have your actual time. So when you first look at it, you're gonna look at all your classes and think, oh, I gotta do this. And then you're gonna actually write down your real time after you've completed them. And that's how you're gonna be able to write your notes and get better prepared for the next class and the next month and the next template. So, and uh, yeah, so I mean, that's that's the best way that I'm gonna do it is just make those templates, print them out and keep them around with me either on my phone or on the fridge or somewhere to where I know I can see them every day. So, and I think that's gonna help the best. That has helped me the best so far. So thank you, thank you for that question. It's a very important question. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. That was very, very insightful. Steve, it seems like we are out of time, and I would love to say thank you, thank you, thank you for coming in and sharing with us everything so that way the kids, you know, in the future or anything like that know exactly what to do, and, and they know what they're walking into and everything like that. It sounds like Full Cell is a great place to go. Sounds like your program director and even all of the teachers are great people to work with. So I, I know one thing, if I ever go back to college, I'll be going there for sure. So uh, Steve, thank you very much for coming in. We had a wonderful time with you. Actually, Stevie, thank you for having me. It was such a great honor to sit in this chair and be here. But uh, anyways, thank you, Stevie. Thank you so much for having me on here. This is a great show. I'm a star. I'm a star. So. Actually, Stephen, thank you, and the pleasure was all ours. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our guest, Stephen Langley. And I'm your host, Stevie Mars. And once again, this was another episode of Interview with the Stars. We'll see you next time.